Today I'll show you a very simple way to figure out how much sand, silt, and clay you have in your garden. I'll then show you how to use the soil texture triangle to figure out the type of soil you have. This information can be very useful when you're trying to select plants for your garden or if you're trying to figure out why certain plants aren't growing well. It also helps you figure out the right amount of fertilizer and water you need to add to your garden. For this test, you will need to get some soil from your garden. It is best to collect a shovelful of soil from several different spots and then mix it. This will give you an average soil sample for the whole garden. You will also need a clear container, and an old jar works well. Try to get one with vertical sides and a flat bottom. I'm going to use an old peanut butter jar. You will also need some tap water. Let's get started. Check the soil and remove any stones, plant roots, and earthworms. They can be returned back to the garden. If you have hard lumps of soil, it is a good idea to break them up. It will make mixing much easier. Take the soil and add it to the jar so that it is about three quarters full. Now add water to almost fill the jar. You want to leave some air space at the top of the jar for mixing. Place the lid on the jar and then shake. You want to mix it well so that all of the soil is broken up into individual particles. Turn the jar over and make sure all the soil is freed from the bottom. You can also use a stir stick or spoon and really give it a good mix. Let the jar sit for one minute. Since sand is heavier than silt and clay, it settles in less than a minute. The sand has now settled to the bottom of the jar. Take a marker and draw a line at the top of the sand layer. Wait one hour. Silt is heavier than clay and will settle next. Draw a line at the top of the silt layer. Wait 24 hours for the clay to settle. Since clay is made up of very fine particles, it takes a long time to settle. Now draw a line at the top of the clay layer. Ignore any floating organic matter, like bits of leaves or stems. I've emptied the jar and can now see the marks very clearly. Take a ruler and measure the distance between the marks. Working in millimeters will make the math easier than using inches. Measure the distance from the bottom of the jar to the first line. The sand layer is 30 millimeters. Next, measure the distance between the first and the second mark. The silt layer is 22. Last, measure the distance between the second and third marks. The clay layer is 25. The soil texture, by definition, consists of sand, silt, and clay, and those three parts added together make up 100%. In our experiment, we measured the amounts using millimeters but the units don't really matter since we will be converting them to a percent. Sand had a value of 30, silt was 22, and clay was 25 with a total of 77. To convert these numbers to percent, we do the following calculation. Percent sand is equal to 30 divided by 77 times 100 or 39 percent. Percent silt is equal to 22 divided by 77 times 100, which is 29 percent. I'm rounding to whole numbers, which is accurate enough for gardening. 
percent clay is 25 divided by 77 or 32 percent. You can see that the sum of the three values equals 100 percent. These numbers tell you how much sand, silt, and clay you have, but we can take this one step further and figure out the type of soil you have. To do that, we need to have a look at the soil texture triangle as pictured here. This might look complicated, but it is actually easy to use. Since the total of sand, silt, and clay equals 100%, we only need to use two of these values, and I'll use silt and clay for my demonstration. On the left side of the triangle, you can see the percent clay value, going from 0% at the bottom to 100% at the top. Our soil sample had 32% clay, and I've indicated that with the blue arrow. We then need to draw a line from that point over to the silt side of the triangle, the right-hand side, following the horizontal line in the triangle. Next, we find our silt value, 29% on the right side of the triangle, as indicated with the red arrow. We then draw a line from this point to the sand side of the triangle, the bottom of the triangle. Again, following the lines of the triangle. The point at which the red and blue lines cross is our soil type. I've added a black arrow to show that point. To simplify the display, I will now remove the blue and red marks. You can see that the soil we have is called clay loam, which is a very good soil. Anything in the center of the triangle is good gardening soil. If your soil is near one of the corners or along the side of the triangle, it means your soil does not have enough sand or silt or clay. You will have to work a bit harder to grow things. I'll discuss ways to improve your soil in a future video, but any type of soil will benefit from the addition of moderate amounts of organic material like compost or manure. Organic matter will loosen up clay soil and add more oxygen. In sandy soil, it adds more nutrients and helps to hold water in the soil. Thank you for watching. If you want to watch more great videos about gardening and garden design, please subscribe to my channel by pressing the subscribe button on this screen. You can unsubscribe at any time. GardenFundamentals.com is a weekly blog that provides lots of useful gardening and garden design information. Learn new gardening techniques, discover the best plant varieties, and improve your gardening design skills. The displayed button will take you directly to my blog. My other blog, GardenMyths.com, tries to uncover the truth behind common gardening advice. What really works to get rid of slugs? Can you build an artificial pond without a pump? Does citronella really ward off mosquitoes? These and many more garden myths are revealed on a weekly basis. Press the top button now and enter the world of garden myths.